today. This is a day we have never seen before. This is a day where we're going to be challenged. This is a day where we're going to be able to experience some things, to do some things that maybe we should have done yesterday, last week, or, you know, you might be trying to close the door on a project or whatever, complete a project. But whatever it is, this is a new day, a day in which you've never seen before. And when you think about it now, think about it now. I like to say how much would you pay for your next breath? Because really, we don't have enough money to, to pay for what God is blessing us with. This breath, this life, his spirit. But, you know, how much would you pay for a day? Think about it now. I mean, man. And, and look at how we can squander the days and waste the days by wasting time and, and doing things that are really not productive. But I'm thanking God today because God has given me a message for you today. He wants you to know that you have the victory. I'm going to say it again. My theme for today is you have the victory. You have the victory. The Bible says it's not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. Uh, God wants you to know that you have the victory. Thank you, Jesus. Let the words of my mouth in the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. To God be the glory. See, today you have the victory. And I'm not just talking about today, but I really do believe that God wants us to take this year out knowing that we have the victory. He wants you to pick your head up, throw your shoulders back. He wants you to get the step and he wants you to start doing what you need to do to bring about that change that you're believing him for. Some of you have been praying a long time, uh, still waiting and still waiting. Well, you have the victory. Breakthrough is imminent. You're at the threshold of a victory. You're at the threshold of a breakthrough. You're at the threshold of a change. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Matter of fact, let me start with this, my opening verse of scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting at the 57th verse. Oh, praise God. But God, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I got to read that again. Mm. Thanks be to God who gives us, who gives you the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Thank you, Jesus. Knowing that your labor is not in vain. Oh, praise the Lord. You know, man, some of us have been busy, but have we been effective? You know, God says, He's given us the victory through our Savior, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's a blessing to know that we're not, you know, we're, 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 we're not at a place where, you know, we, we can't move. We're not at a place where we can't do. Why? Because if, if, if Christ is on board in your life, or I should say if you're on board with him, uh, know that he will cut new pathways. He will make a way out of no way. He will do for you what you can't do for yourself. Oh, my faith, my hope is in Christ today. I, I know him to be the one that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what I can ask or think according to the power that would be in me, that power that would be in you, that power be in faith. Faith to believe that your God can do anything but fail. And, but he says now that we have to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So our focus and commitment must be on the things of God. It's not about me doing what I want to do. It's not about me leaning to my own understanding. Matter of fact, the Bible says in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. 
So I need to make sure I'm around some folk that know the Lord. I need to make sure I'm around some folk that's willing to give me a tight word. I need to be around some folk that will tell me the truth about myself and what they see. I don't need somebody that's going to sugarcoat that thing to try to make me feel good, but talk about me when they turn their back. Uh uh, I need I need a do right brother. I need a do right sister. I need that somebody that love me for who I am, not because of what I'm doing for them. And that's what God wants. He wants us to love him for who he is, not because of what he's doing for you, because he's going to do for you anyway. But the real deal is how much do you love him? How much do you love the Lord? How much do you how much do you hold him in high esteem? God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him, believe in him. And it starts with us believing in him. See, and, and until you believe in him, you're not going to be able to really be steadfast and committed. If you don't stand for something, you, you will fall for anything. We've all heard that statement. But the real deal is, if you don't stand with Christ, Lord Jesus. See, I know Christ to be my firm and sure foundation. See, if you're going to build, oh, and I'm talking about build a life for yourself, you have to build on a sure and firm foundation. Uh, you got to lay a foundation of this word. Uh, you have to have a prayer life. You have to be fully, wholly committed to God in Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me? And know that your labor is not in vain. Because every now and then we look back over the things that we're working on and doing for God. And we're wondering if it's helping anybody. Because some people I've been praying for, that brother, that sister I've been praying for, I don't see no change. I'm about ready to give up on them. Don't you give up. God didn't give up on you. Don't you give up on nobody. Thank you, Jesus. And now, 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 there are, I'm not going to say that there's some folk that you can't let in your front row now. There's some folk you need to put in the balcony. You can't let them in your front row because they're not going to benefit you. And you need to be able to, 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 to keep them in prayer, continue to keep giving them to the Lord. Why? Because God has a plan and a purpose for every life he's called. And I want you to know this morning that he's called you into victory today. He's called you into victory today. Psalms 103 and 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Oh, Lord Jesus, the benefits. There's benefits for doing what you're doing. There's benefits for, for walking with Christ. There's benefits that's going to come out of reading this word. There's benefits and when you're part of a, a lively fellowship. And I'm not talking about a fellowship that's worldly. No, I'm talking about a spiritual fellowship. I'm talking about your church. I'm talking about your prayer line. I'm talking about those things that will keep you connected to some folk that know God, some folk that that that, that, that have a love for God, uh, some folk that are striving and trying to do more, trying to be more. Oh, there's so much more to life than what we might be settling for today. Victory today is yours. Victory today is yours. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. You see, and, 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 and if we're asking, you don't want to act. The Bible says don't ask amiss. In other words, like you don't believe. See, if you're going to ask God for something, believe that you can receive it. Believe that any two touching and agreeing and asking our Father for anything, he's able to do it. That's the blessing of knowing that you're connected to the God of more than enough. I'm talking about the God of more than enough, the same God that stood out on nothing at the corner of no place. The same God that put the sun, the moon, the stars in the sky, the same God mm, 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 who thought enough of you to bring you to this place in your life. You still might not be where you want to be, but when you look back over your life at where you used to be, when you look back over your life at the challenges you had to go through, those challenges and tests you had to, ooh, Lord, you had to weather. Mm, mm, mm. 
And there's some stuff, most stuff, you realize you wasn't able to do it by yourself. Mm -mm. It took a it took an awesome God. Mm. It took an amazing God. And then I want to thank God for the people that he put around me. Them, them, them brothers and sisters I called and said, well, can you pray for me? Uh, those, those brothers and sisters that prayed for me, even when I didn't know I was being prayed for. Oh, I want you to know your labor is not in vain. Oh, weeping may endure for a night. Thank you, Jesus. See, you might be going through, but I'm here to tell you to hold on. <laughs> hold on because victory today is yours. Uh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. I remember we used to sing that in the church. Thank you, Jesus. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get ye, but that's what you should be doing today. You should be telling Satan to get ye behind me, Satan. Are you hearing me? Walk on that devil's head today. Why? Because today you have victory. Today, oh Lord Jesus, uh, you are blessed. You are anointed, appointed, elected, and selected to walk in victory. My God, my God. And when you can get in lockstep with God, no good thing will he withhold from you. This is your day to be blessed. Thank you, Jesus. This is your day to be blessed. It is going to take you exercising some faith in God. Are you hearing me? Faith in Christ. See, we have victory over death in the grave. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because of our salvation. Because of the mere fact that there was a man by the name of Jesus who suffered, bled, and died. So we, oh, Lord, I mean, we have victory over death in the grave. My God, my God. Look, look at that 58 verse. Look at that. Because of, uh, look here. Because of the resurrection and your faith in Christ, look here, the Apostle Paul is reminding us to be steadfast, steadfast, unmovable, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing what? That your labor is not in vain. Your labor, that what you are doing, those things that you're doing for Christ, those things that you're doing for God. Whew, it's not in vain. So we cannot afford to get weary and well doing. You know, and 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 I was speaking to someone who, uh, yesterday and he was sharing with me that this pastor wants to start a church and he's in a, a, a like a community center and in one of the uh, projects there in Newark. And but he wants to break out into a he wants to get a building, wants to do this, wants to do that. But he's dealing with seniors. I mean, his church is made up of seniors who are really not able to, to pay tithes, or at least they're they're they're, they're not at a, they don't they're not at that place where they really understand the importance of tithing and so on and so forth. But he wants to buy a van. He want to do this. He want to do that. And 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 you know, don't get weary in well doing. Yet you know, don't despise the small beginnings. You see, and sometimes we want to put the cart before the horse. And we have to be able to, to, to understand that there's a process. You need to know the people that's going to be with you. Because sometimes when people are out of work, unemployed, don't have a job, oh boy, they will be all up under you. But as soon as they get that job, get that J-O-B, get them, get them ducats or get that money coming in, then, you know, now you're looking for them. You know, the, the commitment that they had prior to the job, you know, that's not there no more. So you really have to take it slow. And I, even with your ministry, and I don't care if you got a prayer line, I don't care if you're just sending out a, a word of scripture to people over the internet or, or, or an email or text message or whatever. Don't despise the small beginnings. Why? Because we're here to promote this gospel of Jesus Christ. We're here, that word that, that is sent out, that word that is received could be that something that can make life better, that can make a day better for someone that might be going through, someone that might be broken, someone that might be sick. They might need a word from the Lord. And guess what? That word you send through text, through email, or on Facebook, whatever, you know, because we got some Facebookers on this on this prayer line. I know that God is able, ready, willing, and able to do what needs to be done when we approach him in faith. Faith, faith the size of a mustard seed. And, and, and see, see, and, and, and the, see the, the resurrection, Christ's resurrection changed everything. 
See, his resurrection changed everything. Why? Because he came to give us life and to give us his life and to bring you into the abundant life. Are you hearing me? Oh, John 10, 10, B. Uh, he's come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. And in order to have the abundant life, you have to have Christ in your life. He's come to give you his life. Thank you, Jesus. He gave his life up on the cross. But now he's offering his life to those that, of us who are dying in sin. Those of us who see no way out, no way through. You see, because having faith in Christ gives me hope. See, I have a lively hope that all things are working together for the good, even though it might not look like it, even though I might not feel like it. The Bible says we learn to walk by faith and not by sight. You have to be able to keep hope alive. I'm going to say it again. You have to be able to keep hope alive. You have the victory. You have the victory. You have the victory. You have to be able to see the truth. And what you're living today. What are you living today? Man. Mm, mm -mm. That's why I said earlier, you want to have some people around you that will tell you the truth about yourself. That will tell you the truth about what they see. You know, I'm talking about good friends. I'm not talking about people. You know, you, you think about Job and his friends said, you must have did something wrong for God to bring all this hardship and all this stuff on you. I don't need that beat down word right now. I need a word that's going to pick me up. I, I need a word that's going to encourage me. But I also need a truthful word. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Jesus. Only the truth will set you free. See, see, and, 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 and understand as a man, woman of God, God wants to use you today to be his ambassador, that instrument that is able to bring change. You have to be steadfast steadfast. I mean, I don't know about nobody else, but I'm committed to this. I love God and I'm thanking God for giving me an opportunity. Every day I wake up, I have an opportunity to touch somebody's life. Every day that you wake up, you have an opportunity to touch somebody's life in a positive way. Woo, thank you, Jesus, in a positive way. Why? Because I want to keep moving forward. That's what this, hey, hey, the clock is ticking. Oh, man, sometimes we wish we can go back and change some things. But one thing about life, you can't go back and change nothing. So you might as well accept what has happened, take responsibility for it, and, and, and do what you need to do to, to make life work. Are you hearing me? And life will work when you do it according to this word of God. Thank God for the B-I-B-L-E. I thank God for his word because I recognize and realize if it had not been for the word, thank you, Jesus, that word that was able to encourage me, uh, that word that was able to pick me up, turn me around, uh, that word that reminded me that I am somebody because God didn't make no junk when he made me. That's, hey, I'm going to tell you, those words I just said, I spoke those words to myself for a long time because I had to come to a place where I knew again, that I was somebody, because man, you can, you can make some choices that will cause you to be beat down and beat up, and oh man, and, but, but God said, you are somebody, because I didn't make no junk when I made you, and I, and I learned to fall in love with myself all over again. Uh, I, don't, I wonder if there's somebody on the line today that need to fall in love uh, with themselves again, uh, need to pick themselves up, need to hug themselves, uh, need to love on themselves, need to just, oh, Lord Jesus, uh, you have the victory. You have the victory. See, even in the face of overwhelming odds, those difficult situations and circumstances, uh, God wants you to know, even in the midst of all of that, you have the victory. You have the victory. You know why? He woke you up this morning. Everybody didn't wake up today. And if you woke up in your bed, in your home, my God, my God, you were blessed. You, you, you woke up and you're not waking up to bombshells and, you know, like over there in Ukraine. You woke up, you, you didn't wake up flooded, you know, your, your, your house flooded. I'm not talking about a basement. I'm talking about your whole house being flooded or being moved and so on by the waters. And look at what is going on in Mississippi. I mean, they can't even drink the water. 
They can't brush their teeth. They can't take a bath or a shower. Forget about trying to water some grass. Thank you, Jesus. I, we have so much to be thankful for. So much to be thankful for. And in spite of what we're dealing with, and I'm not saying that I'm not here to downplay what you're dealing with, because I know some of you are dealing with some tough stuff, some tough stuff. Got to make some diff difficult decisions. Matter of fact, I heard on the prayer line last night, uh, 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 upcoming test for, for one of the, one of the mem members, one of the people, part of the fellowship, going to be taking an exam this weekend. You know, hey, know that you have the victory. This is what God put in my spirit for you today. You have the victory. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by his spirit. You have the victory. And, and, and oh, Lord Jesus. And that's going in. God wants you to know going into this weekend, this Labor Day weekend, you have the victory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See, it's our perspective. You know, it, it's how you see, how you view life, how you view the challenges and these different things that are coming up against us. See, don't look at these challenges as problems. Look at it as an opportunity, an opportunity that can bring about that which is greater, that which is best. See, because God's going to use that to build you up. God's going to use that to uh, enrich and to empower you and to enable you to be a blessing to someone else. All of us is going to be challenged. All of us. Hey, look here. You're not, you're, not, you're not walking around. You're not on the planet. Not on this planet called Earth and not going to be challenged. You're going to deal with something. Every one of us is going to deal with something. And, and, and it's, it's no getting around it. See, but these challenges are in place and are meant to do what? To build you up. To build you up. Not tear you down, but to build you up. And this is why we have to approach these problems and challenges as an opportunity to bring about a greater change. And that's what this is about. Knowing that life is about change. Look here, look here. Time is constantly moving. You can't stop time. Why? Because we're talking about change. So, so you have to be able to understand that your life is, is in a constant flux, changing all the time. Whether you're sitting on a, on a log, not doing anything, move, not moving, you made the decision, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till my change comes. You can't afford to wait no more. You can't afford to wait because when you look back over your life, at you, man. <laughs> Some of the things you were caught up in, some of the people you was whew, caught up with and so on and so forth, you wasted, we all have wasted some valuable time. I had to add valuable because time is precious. It's a commodity that you can't put a price tag on. Are you hearing me? Just like your health. You know, so many of us don't realize, you know, the value even of our health taking care of ourselves, so on and so forth. And you take care of yourself, your labor is not in vain. I mean, sowing into you. I'm talking about being mindful of how you're, you know, caring for your body, the choices and decisions that you're making. Man, so much. We, 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 we're responsible for so much. But the real deal is we're overlooking. We, we can be overlooking the things that mean the most, like family like family, like family. Family should be a priority, you know, but more than that, what God has called you to do should be a priority. What's your priority today? And this is why I say your perspective, you know, is so very important. See, 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 see these challenges? Oh yes, mm -hmm. they're definitely gonna build you up if, you, if you're willing to submit to the process. Now you have to ask yourself, Am I willing to submit to the process? See, and that's the, that's the key component, being willing to submit to the process. See, and then you can be what? Immovable. See, and that's what, hey, that immovable means I'm not about to give up. I'm not about to give in. Uh-uh. I'm going to go all the way with Jesus. Why? Because he's called me to something greater, something bigger. You know, I might have to go back to school. Man, I might have to up my game by, you know, 
getting a, a, a yes, let's say, uh, getting a, a, an, an education, growing that education. You have to be able to make yourself available to do those things you need to do to up your game. Because I know that there's another side of me I haven't seen yet. I know there's another side of me that can bring about greater. I know there's another side of me that God is trying to bring out, Lord Jesus. And that's the beauty of this, because life is full of challenges. And the biggest challenge that we have is with ourselves. We can talk about the devil. We can talk about him. We can talk about her. But your biggest fight is going to be with yourself. Are you hearing me this morning? See, see, the devil like to play with your mind. He like to get up in your head, cause you to doubt, cause you to think that you're not going to make it. God don't love you. Nobody care about you. And if it wasn't for no bad luck, you'd have no luck at all. Well, I'm here to tell you, mm -mm, today you have the victory. God has called you to something greater, something bigger. He's about to do a new thing in and through you. He, oh, something about to show up in the mailbox. Something going to show up at the door. Are you hearing me? You're going to meet somebody today that's going to bless you. You're going to meet someone over the weekend, someone you never met before, someone you didn't know. You're going to do something. You're going to pass a test. You're going to do whatever it is you need to do to do what? To edify and to build yourself up and to make yourself strong. Woo, are you hearing me? God's about to make you even stronger. Oh, the devil thought he had you, but you got away. Matter of fact, you didn't got away a long time ago, but you're just waking up to the reality that you're free at last, free at last. Good God Almighty, I'm free at last. I told you, I've been telling you all week, make today count. Make today count. Woo, thank you, Jesus. So I'm not about to quit. I'm not about to give up or give in. Mm -mm. Uh, uh You know why? Because I realize I'm so close to stepping into my victory. I'm so close to stepping into my blessing. I'm, I'm so close to receiving that, what God has promised, uh, what I've been asking God for. I'm not about to back down. I'm not about to give up. Uh, I'm not about to throw in the towel. Uh-uh. I got to go all the way because God has been too good to me for me to want to lay down. Uh-uh. For me to want to give up. I got to go all the way. Why? Because I recognize and realize I can do it. That's what I should be telling myself right now today, this morning, whether you're on YouTube or if you're on this prayer line, you should be telling yourself, I can do this. I can do this. I got this. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is going to work today. It's going to work. It's going to work. It's got to work. Mm, mm, mm. And I'm not about to give up. Mm -mm. I'm going to see it to maturity. I'm going to see it to the end. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because as a person sow, so shall you reap. As you sow. So how committed are you to sowing? How much are you willing to sow? What are you willing to give up in order to get what you want? As a man, as a woman, so, so shall you reap. If you, if you want your labor to not be in vain, you got to be willing to sow. You know, sow what is good. If you sow what is good, you're going to reap what is good. And one thing about sowing, reaping and sowing, sowing and reaping, one thing about sowing and reaping, you plant a seed, you get a harvest. See, in other words, you know, just got to plant just a little bit of good and you're going to get a bunch of good. See, you, you plant some bad, you're going to get a bunch of bad. See, as a man, as a woman, sow. So if you keep sowing to the bad, you're going you're gonna to get a crop of bad stuff. And you're wondering why you're overwhelmed. You're wondering why, you, you know, your field is full of weeds. Why? Because you're not sowing to the good. You got to make sure, think on those things that are good, those things that are of a good report. You got to keep your mind at a place and in that place where, you know, you're focusing on the good and not on the bad. And I'm not saying bad is not happening because bad is all around us because we're living in a fallen world. But I choose to look towards that man named Jesus. I, I, I choose to look to look towards Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. My sister, my brother, you too are going to have to endure the cross that you're carrying. Every one of us, we have to pick up our cross daily. We have to carry our cross daily. That doesn't mean it's going to 
it's going, you know, that cross is going to be easy. But I'm here to tell you today, whatever it is you're going through, you can make it if you try. You're going to have to put your best foot forward and you're going to have to muster up some, 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 some faith, some mustard seed faith. Are you hearing me? And then that mountain of a problem, it's going to move. It's going to be cast into the sea if you're willing to hold on to that faith, to know that all things are working together for the good. Oh, man, look at Romans 6 and 12 says, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust. In its lust, the Bible says we are all drawn away by our own lust. In other words, there's, there's something in me working against the good that I want to do. I want to do right. Paul says in Romans 7, why am I doing those things that I don't want to do? What's up with that? What's going on? And then he answered his own question. He says, it is the sin that is in me. That sin that is in him. He recognized and realized he had to get, you know, he had to get control of that sin life. He, he had to, he had to come before that Ooh, that amazing God, that King of Kings. Uh, he had to come before the Lord and repent like we all must do. And not just on Sunday. We got to do this thing daily. And, 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 and give no place to the devil. Give no place to the devil. Because Romans 6 and 13 says, And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Ooh. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. Thank you, Jesus. No longer under the law, but under grace. Thank God for Jesus. See, he made it possible for us to be under grace. See, because we never could have lived, uh, you know, based upon the law. Because that law was there to keep us in line, but it couldn't bring the correction. It is to show us God's ways and what God would have us to do. But it's not in us. You know, we are naughty by nature. It is in our DNA to do wrong. I'm here to tell you now. You know, and, and, and you can want to do everything that you can do to do the right thing. But the thought, the activities, the actions, I mean, stuff just happens. Matter of fact, the Bible says a double-minded person is unstable. You can't even afford to be double-minded. You have to, you have to walk in the, in the in the full assurance that what God has called you to, what God is now doing in your life, you have to walk in the full assur assurance of knowing today. Today, you have the victory. Today, you have the victory. It might not look like it. I might not feel like it. I don't see it. Uh, but, but I'm going to trust God. I'm going to take him at his word. I have the victory. And that's it. That's it. That's it. Why? Because whatever is born of God will overcome the world. Mm, mm, mm. Whatever is born of God. And we have been born again. Thank you, Jesus. My sister, you've been born again. Thank you. My brother, you have been born again. And that means you can overcome the world. Are you hearing me? This is the victory that has overcome the world. What's that? Our faith. Your faith. 1 John 5 and 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. My God, my God. Your faith, and I'm talking about faith the size of a mustard seed that can move a mountain. You have faith. If you have that faith, that faith, that unconquerable faith, that faith that's telling you that, man, oh, man, oh, man, I know I can do this. That's what I told you earlier today. 
You need to tell yourself, I can do it. I can pass this test. I can, I can get this job. I can, I can, I can, I can make this thing happen. I can get my children through school. Uh, I can, I can, I can support my community. I can, su I can support my church. Uh, I can start this ministry. Oh yes, I can work with my pastor. Whatever the case may be, God is pushing us to another level, and He wants you to know today that you have the victory. And guess what? That victory victory will grow, it will expand, it will abound. As you keep walking by faith and not by sight, God's going to prove himself to be everything that he says he is, and he's going to do mm, the unimaginable. Ooh, see, when you reach your limitation, God shows you, my God, mm, there's no boundaries mm, that can contain what God is now willing, ready, willing, and able to do for you. He don't want to fence you in. He wants you. He want to widen your coast and expand your borders. He wants you to be all that you can be. He wants you to experience all there is that is good to experience in life. You don't have to get like Solomon, drinking and carousing with all of the mm -mm, mm -mm. give no place to the flesh. But if you are led by the spirit, Romans 8, 14, those of us who are led by the Spirit are sons and daughters of God. I want to be led by His Spirit because I know His Spirit will not lead me astray. I know His Spirit is going to bring me to a place where I'm going to be able to see another side of myself. That side is going to tell me I have the victory through Christ Jesus. Why? Because God has been good. And because he rose that third day, I can rise. I don't care how long you've been down. I don't care what you've been going through. I don't care how difficult the road you've been traveling has been. Oh, the pitfalls, the, 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 the potholes, whatever. I'm here to tell you, hold on, my sister. Hold on, my brother. Weep, 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 and may endure for a night. But joy can come in the morning. This morning is your day to step into your victory. This morning is your day to step into your breakthrough. This morning is your day to step into your change. Yes, this is your day. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you can have it. Yes, you can be it. Yes, you can see it. Oh my God, my God. Yes, I believe. And that's it. I believe. I believe that all things are working together for the good. Why? Because I'm part of God's plan. You have the victory. Today, you have the victory. Oh, my God, my God. You're going to end today in victory. You're going to end this year in victory. Your life is going to be a successful life. I wonder when you get down to the end of the line, what will life say about you? See, this is your day of change. This is your day of breakthrough now. And I'm going to walk in victory all day, all weekend, all year. And matter of fact, for the balance of my days, I want to walk in victory. And I know every now and then stuff going to come. But you know something? God has not given me a spirit of fear. But he's given me love, a sound mind. Are you hearing me? You do not have to operate in fear. Love, power, in a sound mind. Thank God for that love. Thank him for that power. And thank him for that sound mind. Are you hearing me? You see, because power, based upon Luke 10, 19, I give you power to thread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, nothing, that includes sickness and disease. Nothing shall by any means stop you, <laughs> keep you from becoming that man, that woman God sent you here to be. I'm not going to say it won't hinder you, won't cause you to stumble a little bit, but it's not going to stop you. Mm -mm. Not until God calls you home will you be stopped. Are you hearing me? But today, this is your day to walk in victory. This is your day to accomplish. This is your day to complete. This is your day to finish. This is your day to make happen those things that need to happen and take place in your life that can remind you or let you know whew, you're in the master's plan. You're in the master's plan. Make your today count. Make today count.